up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report, a special Nerd Gen Report. Why is this special? Well, we get to review the Wonder Woman 1984 film that just recently came out yesterday. Um, I saw it about one o'clock in the afternoon. I didn't know the movies were two and a half hours. I didn't even pay attention to that. But it seemed long. <laughs> it seemed long. But, um, and we got lots to talk about. Brian, welcome back to the show. How was your holidays? Holidays were great. And it was, it was a nice present to be able to flip on HBO Max and oh, yeah. watch this movie. And to your point, hit pause and finish it in, in a second part because it was kind of long. So we did actually break it up. But um, hey, look, just to get new material in the genre, I have to admit when we talk about it, I have a little bit of a bias just because we haven't seen anything new, yeah. you know, certainly on this scale. So that was fun. It was a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah. Um, let's get right to it. Yeah. The opening scene I was enjoying their version of the Thamascarian wipeout, right? <laughs> and then we get the sort of, I guess the the sort of uh, uh, dialogue that sets the tone and the, I guess the theme for the rest of the film. Truth and all that stuff. The first half of me kind of dragged a little bit and it certainly picked up obviously in the second half i enjoyed the action sequences um i thought kristen wig was 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 uh was great pedro pascal you know he wasn't so much the twisty mustache twirly guy right evil guy he was a guy that was for the most part all of us who who who, who would uh get that sort of uh power i guess was sort of go, go nuts right he, he certainly did um wonder woman herself the character there wasn't other than spoiler warning i'm gonna put that in the, in the put, <laughs> let me put that because people got upset when i talked about luke skywalker and all that stuff okay spoiler warning oh, i'm gonna put it there yeah, it, it, it gets crazy. Anyway, I like the, you know, the invisible plane thing. I like, you know, okay, okay, right? It's the power that she knew how to do when she made it happen, okay. Then the whole flying thing was kind of weird for me because, you know, oh, it's air and wind and okay. And it's okay, you can fly now, right? Oh, I, she, we knew she could fly. as. You know, uh, yeah, fans, you know the comics. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we knew she could fly. They never really, I don't think they've ever really explained it, but since she wasn't able to, she was just leaping like the Hulk and stuff. We sort of, okay, she's flying now, cool. But other than that, there wasn't, there wasn't any, anything more or anything better than the first. I still like the first. Most people seem to like the first one better than uh, this film. For me, Brian, this movie was okay, but it wasn't anything for me to run. I only told you because we do the show. Did you see it? But something dope, like for example, I'm gonna say it again, Money Heist. I'm telling everybody, watch this show. But for Wonder Woman 84, I didn't, there wasn't that excitement for, I was paying attention. It didn't, I, did, I wasn't not engaged because I'm a fan and I wanna see what happens, but other than that, it was a it was just a regular superhero film, standalone, not connected to anything. It was his own thing. What did you think about it? Oh man, we have a lot of thoughts, a lot of ground to cover here. So, okay. and I don't think we're gonna agree on everything. But so first off, it's the first film or the first really new product we've gotten in this area that wasn't a TV show because obviously you know like Umbrella Academy boys we've had some stuff superhero wise but yes. not a movie in the DC or Marvel universe in over a year. Yes. I will admit when the opening credits were hitting I was pretty excited. Like not even about the it was just the, the idea like man I'm getting to see this like 
on op- you know, basically on opening day at home. And, and it looked good. I will say to people who don't have HBO Max, I was really impressed. The visual quality looks great. Like if you're of the services that are out there, yeah. it looked really bright. The colors were really vibrant. So it's like just a little thing there, but like it's a really good quality thing. I love your description of Wi-Fi because I had the same reaction when they were going through the office. Of course, I'm like, this is like all these shows. I'm like, I'm looking for like Rob Riggle to give some like fake color commentary. That would have been, that would have been cool to have some color commentary. <laughs> so I had the same reaction. Leslie now, Jones. I gotta stop. Like let, me, let me ask you a question though, because I feel like this scene was in there for two reasons. One is clearly to set the stage about truth and all that sort of stuff. I think it was also there to tease you about the Amazonian series. Possibly I ask you, do you think like having watched that sequence and that if that's the look, if that's the style, does it make you any more or less interested in a show just about that? I didn't think anything of it after the, the sequence. There you go. So that's interesting. My takeaway from it was if they do that show, they have to have Connie Nielsen and Robin Wright. Yeah. Like, without them, that show is not going to work. Yeah. That was my like one yeah. take. Because the, the few seconds they were on screen, I was interested. When it was just the other Amazons, I was like, great. Okay, yeah, yeah, how's yeah. she gonna? How's she either going to win or what lesson is she going to learn from this? And you're waiting for that to happen. Yeah. So here's my weird dynamic of a two and a half hour movie. It, it, it felt long overall, but it almost felt like the individual pieces of it were not explored enough in a lot of ways in the sense of i felt like they were trying to cram in a bunch of things and we kind of didn't go all the way down the path of you know like it almost we got to the end of chris pine's part and i was like why like i get why he was here to move the story along yeah. but why was he really here he didn't actually really do anything other than fly the plane for that one seat you know what i mean so i had a lot of those moments of like why why did we really spend 10 15 minutes with this or do that like it just i almost was wanting more of more depth even yeah. Kristen wig i was like we'll get to cheetah in a second i mm-hmm. i understand why Kristen wig would want to do this part I mean, she doesn't get asked to be sort of an action badass a lot. Yeah. And I thought she did a pretty good job. Yes, I do. Physically, I was impressed. She looked athletic. She looked, you know. But it, it almost made me wonder, like, why did they want Kristen Wiig? I felt like an, I felt like there were a lot of actresses who could have played that part because the things that made Kristen Wiig special and unique she wasn't really asked to do those other than the very kind of opening couple of minutes. So I had a lot of those struggles with this movie where like I overall enjoyed the ride mm-hmm. in part because I hadn't seen anything new in a long time. But I'm with you. It's like if I was giving the first movie, say, three stars out of four, which is probably what I would give it, this would probably be more like two and a half. Yeah, you know, it's yes. like it's just it's just. And, and, and we'll get That's back what I was to thinking. It. Yeah, but I'll, I'll get back to you. We'll talk more about this, but I was actually surprised at how safe they played things. We'll get to that more in a bit. But I thought for the most part, the choices they made were pretty safe choices. And I don't think they needed to, given how good the first movie was. Give me an example of a, of a moment, I guess, you, you, you think they played it safe. So the villains, the, the okay. motivations of both Cheetah and Maxwell Lord, um, very standard superhero tropes, right? This idea of you have this con man, wants power, right? Finds a special object, and then the power goes to his head and he overloads and can't handle it. Yeah. You have this kind of loser, Kristen Wiig character, loser scientist, wants to be popular, wants to be beautiful, you know, is granted those wishes, doesn't know how to handle that responsibility. I feel like those are very cliche, they superhero are. motivations um and, and the they fact that really went outside that the fact that Kristen wig at the end uh her character renounced that wish it wasn't even more of a downer for me because are we yeah. sure she renounced it it she looked like a regular she looked regular to me at the end didn't she well I guess the idea is she wasn't Cheetah anymore, but she had two wishes. So did she have to renounce both? Interesting. I thought they left that one kind of hanging. Like the way she looks, I wasn't totally convinced she was and back to her like, original self. I'm not going anywhere with this. <laughs> so, 
Yeah. Um, so I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Like, did you feel like, I don't know, like, did you feel like any of the characters outside of Gal Gadot, like, really got sort of fully developed and fleshed out the way you wanted them to? Again, Wonder Woman, to me, Gal Gadot's character was the same as the first one. Nothing, I guess, uh, extra there. Um, the fact that she was cool with this dude coming back and being, you know, like, a surprise, but yet not freaked out. I would have been cool with. Soon as she gets him home, she she like you know puts him in a in a in a chokehold. Like who the hell are you? You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. Come on, and because she didn't know, I, I guess so. She wasn't sure, but to, it, she was surprised. She was surprised, right? And the only reason that sort of sparked her or or or, or gave her that that it was. Steve Trevor was because he said something. Right. And that's how he she recognized him. But she should have been freaked. I would have been freaked. I would have like, yo, what what? You're dead. It's been so, how many years? So the fact that she was cool with that was like, okay. Whatever, right? So here, here's my one continuity question on that. And it's a little <laughs> was their relationship really at that stage when he died in the first one? Was it was there... were they like I mean I they clearly were romantically interested in each other but they had never expressed that I think and, so there was a scene in the, in the first movie where... yeah but they were never together together my point is like they kind of picked up as if they had been together together in this one and I was like but they I, were I together were... together though I get that they love each other but like it felt no, no, like no, they uh... did something they, they, oh they like... did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right. I just, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. She ain't forgetting him. <laughs> no, I know. Well, clearly not. She, she... <laughs> clearly not. I'll never love again. But, uh... yeah. but uh... no, I just, mm -hmm. like I said, he, he was there. It felt like he was there because they knew one of the best parts of the first movie was their chemistry. Exactly. And they didn't want to let that go. And yeah. so it almost felt like they forced away to get him back in the movie, but then really didn't give him a ton to do. That's the my biggest complaint. In the first one, he was really pushing a lot of the plot along. Yeah. And in this one, he was just there so that they could kind of, you know, be He's partners just, for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that those was one of those things that you sort of like, okay, I'm gonna live with this because that's what they wrote in and they look good together, whatever, we move on. And they are good together. Like they're they have yeah. chemistry on screen, like no doubt. Like so, but I just again it just felt like if you gave me a choice of like and I understand, like if they brought you know, that was the thing she wanted, so it gave her stakes, you know, in that sense, but it's yeah. and hence she had to give him up and that's real sacrifice. I understand all that. I'm just saying if you gave me the choice of few more minutes of character development with Kristen Wiig or Pedro Pascal, I would have chosen that over, you know, Chris Pine trying on 1080s outfits. Yeah. What do you think of um, some of the, the similar aspects of what's going on now to in the film that they're sort of trying to make a connection to with, you know, um, Trump and truth do you think they were leaning towards that? That was that was the message that would they were trying to throw at us, just to sort of for us to relate. I guess I don't know. Well, the conspicuous part, I guess, would be that this movie was supposed to come out in the summer, right? So it was supposed to come out a couple of months before the election. So yeah. the placement is. I see. When you have a, a you know you have a Reagan s character, I've heard people say Pedro Pascal is sort of meant to be like echoes of of Trump as he was in the eighties. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't feel that personally, like watching the yeah. film. I, yeah, I didn't Peter think Pascal more reminded me of like the, the, the guys who used to come on the, your TV and hawk yeah. for like the old electronics stores, like the Wiz or like Crazy Eddie or like, that's what I remember. He yeah. didn't remind me of, of um, you know, 80s real estate Trump, but I, yeah. but I, I've heard that that was, that was, that was potentially an element, but no, I don't know. I, if to the extent it was politicized, and I think Gall has said that wasn't the intent, who knows? But I, I didn't, I didn't feel that as much. I was just like, look, you're in 1984. If you're going to be in 1984, you know, the Reagan administration and the Cold War are the reality of that history. Like, it's kind of like when X Men did Days of Future Past, right? You, you, if you choose 
a certain point in history, you have to accept yeah. whatever administration is in the year that you choose. I don't know. That's kind of, I, I guess that's how I took it, but yeah. Another thing that sort of like, they sort of built it up for it to be like nothing at the end was that armor. It was like, oh snap, she's gonna wear this armor. What's she gonna do? She knocks out a bunch of people she would normally knock out without the armor. Then she faces Cheetah and Cheetah just destroys it. <laughs> no, it was like a gold garbage can. She just did like <laughs> it was like, okay, why why are we seeing this then? But that bothered me. It's similar to, and I'll, and I'll, I'll just say this quickly. Um, if, if any one of you have watched the uh, um, Blood of Zeus, there's a certain uh, uh, piece of weaponry that's made for, um, uh, I forget the name of the character, the lead character. And at the end of it, there's no use for it. So I felt like building that up for it to be a letdown was sort of like, okay, you know. I think they did stuff just to do it, just to make it different than the first. But they didn't really didn't they really didn't deliver anything better than the first. They just delivered something different. So they the, the, cho the one of the choices I liked was, and I think you always deal with this with characters like Wonder Woman, Superman, Captain Marvel, is how do you make the character vulnerable? Um, and I thought they did a decent job of that. So I actually liked the sequence with sort of the, the tanks and the vehicles where she sort of, you, you already had the clue from the lock that something was wrong with her power. Yeah, and yeah. so when she gets shot and you actually see her hurt, yeah, I feel like that scene was probably my favorite action scene in the movie. Cause in that moment you're like, oh, the stakes are up. Like she actually is not, she's in trouble. Like she actually might have to pull, you know? So I think that was a good choice that changed from the first where like, you know, because she is so strong. It's like, how do you, how does anyone stop her that isn't superpowered? Yeah. So I actually, that was probably my favorite sequence in the movie was was that her trying to figure out how to do this when she's at like 60%, basically. Would you um, have wanted something like that to be introduced earlier than the, than, than the time that they delivered it in? That sequence? I actually wouldn't have minded if they carried it through to the end. So one of the things that I thought was interesting was when, when the armor was introduced, in the back of my head, I was like, oh, is she going to use the armor as a replacement for her powers now that she's not bulletproof? And I actually thought it would have been cool to see her try to solve the final fight if she was still less than 100%. Yeah. Like, you know, and I think that would have helped a little bit versus what we got. I, I didn't love the final action sequence. I actually, I don't know what your thoughts are. I mean, you're the technical expert here. <laughs> For a movie that was so bright yeah. and colorful, why do you think the cheetah fight was so dark? dark. You like It was short and you really didn't get to see a lot of her doing her thing. Probably to hide the, to blind us from the visual effects that probably didn't look good if they were brightened. That's the only explanation for me anyway, because it looked dark in the trailer and it looked dark here. It's like they really didn't do much to make it look any more impressive than than, than what we saw in the beginning. Because no, not many were impressed with the, 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 the visual effects for a cheetah. And in this one, it sort of looked the same. And for it to be dark, I think it was to pretty much hide that. I was... I was almost taken aback by how quick the fight went. And it made me think the same thing you're saying, which was like, could they, like, were they just not able to capture sort of the animal-like motions in the fight scenes enough? Cause she really didn't get to do a whole, they had that one kind of money sequence where she kind of swings her around. But I, I was, I have to admit, I, I was hoping for more. Like that was the battle I was looking forward to from the trailer and we really just didn't get a lot of kind of big sequences there. I would say that Cheetah did look formidable. Yeah. Right? In, 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 in her, the way she moved. Sorry, I don't think Thundercats is coming just yet. Nah, that's, I was gonna say, I was gonna <laughs> ask you. It felt like we might be a little early based on that scene. <laughs> but I was, I was disappointed in that, that it didn't, it wasn't, better than what we originally saw in trailers. And I, and I think it, it, it just wasn't there yet. Um, but like yeah. The fight, the fight scene in the, the fight scene actually in the, 
before she becomes cheetah actually i thought was a little bit better that was actually better done with you know but we you know it just yeah it was weird it was like we had one kind of give and take then we're in the water and then she electrifies her but then it was weird because like she electrocutes her but you're like oh she's gonna die and i'm like she's clearly not dead she just leaves her there like it was yeah, yeah it was a little, little weird yeah. so you didn't like pedro pascal you didn't like what he was going for there i it thought he was the more interesting of the two villains it was it just didn't uh, i think that performance just wasn't the best that i seen of him okay that was like I, I guess my he was just a typical I, I mean like I've seen this sort of performances before you know so it wasn't anything over the top he was still good as Max Warlord, Lord but in terms of the character um, nothing I've not seen before you know it wasn't really Maxwell Lord from the comics there wasn't a lot of the only the, the really the reason why they seemed to go with that was in the comics Maxwell Lord is the son of Maxwell Lord. And that relationship to his father in the comics is really what they replicated in the movie with his son, right? So in the comics, the Maxwell Lord villain, his dad sets out to kind of be the perfect father. And mm -hmm. when he fails to do that as like a corporate CEO, he kills himself when Maxwell Lord is like a teenager. And that becomes like a big motivation for throughout his storyline. And so I think they kind of use that here with the, with his with his son although i have to admit <laughs> in the back of my head i was having a chuckle because i was like no matter what pedro pascal does it always comes back to the child whether it's baby yoda or his son he just can't help right? it. that's his one week spot. <laughs> we're probably gonna get a lot more of those yeah exactly <laughs> but I, you know i i found him a little more even though it was maxwell lord and it wasn't the comic care I just found a little more interesting because he seemed as a personality, he was trying for something a little bit different. And I, mm -hmm. you know, I was okay with that. I thought he was, he at least when he was on screen, I was at least interested in yeah. watching. Um, yeah. But then again, to my point about depth, you know, I felt like they, they were kind of, they would introduce these elements where you could clearly see the physical toll that the wishes were taking on mm -hmm. him, but then they didn't kind of play that out to the end. Like by the end, he's, he's in this like satellite thing and he's perfectly fine. Well, I, during that, I was waiting for something like that. And what he was doing, I think he had mentioned it before, he was going to uh, grant these wishes through this mechanism and at the same time heal himself. I think he was doing that. Okay. They just didn't, people People will probably miss that. You know what I'm saying? If they, if they didn't explain it or whatever the case may be. So they they didn't really do a good job of letting people know that he was going to do this or this was happening to him because he was doing these actual wishes yeah. or, or taking back of, of, of certain body functions. I say, cause he did mention it on the plane when he was talking. Yeah, to that, yeah. that was like a perfect example where it felt like we could have had an action sequence where maybe he was about to defeat wonder woman, but his own vulnerability prevented him. It just, as I said, it just felt like that wasn't, we weren't deep enough on that. In the same way that the stone itself, the minute I saw it, I was like, oh, this is going to connect to something in her past, some Amazonian history, another god, something. And she kind of hints at it when she's talking about it. Mm -hmm. But then that just gets dropped. Yeah. You know, so it just yeah, felt like there were some loose ends here that we didn't get. Um, and, and that, that for a movie that I, I, I realize I sound like I'm being overly critical, I actually overall enjoy it just felt a little bit uneven, whereas the first one felt tighter, kind of like start to finish in the ideas we were getting. Let me ask you this. Would it have been better for them to do it like this? When she was sort of trying to find out what that rock came from, would it, it, have, would it have been better if at the end of the cutscene she goes to sort of find out where this comes from and who right and then that's where she just discovers dark side in those tombs or whatever because we saw a trailer for that but it, it was just uh i guess a trailer of her going into some tomb but there was no rhyme or reason why she would go there right perhaps this would have been the vehicle the reason for her to go s seek out where this comes from and discovers that so this movie appeared to take really great pains to not connect back 
through the universe. I thought everything from the way it's visually presented, how bright it is, to there's relatively few Easter eggs that I picked up on. And there's almost, there's no mention of the Snyderverse, you know, Justice League. This movie seemed to be really making an effort to not do something like that. Although I would agree with you, like, you know, there's, there's, even if they wanted to do things from Wonder Woman canon, just to kind of tease you on something, I would have been, I would have been okay with that. Um, you know, it's interesting, ironically, we, one of the big moments in Wonder Woman and Maxwell Lord's comic history, which will sound familiar to you and a lot of the fans out there, is she actually kills him at one point in the comics. Mm. And see if this sounds vaguely familiar. She is faced with a sort of an impossible choice and she breaks his neck. <laughs> Who knows? And she is subsequently alienated by the rest of the Justice League for doing it. I, so it's funny. I was sort of in my mind. I was like, "Are they going to go that route? Are they going to go that route? That'd be pretty violent for this. This the way they've set up Wonder Woman. If she goes that route, but you know, it, it's it is one of the things that obviously you know in Man of Steel we, we we saw play out with different characters. My other question for you, from a continuity perspective, so she's definitely supposed to be able to fly in Justice League, then, right? Because this is 1984. So how could she not fly in Justice League? Considering that's like. 30 years, 25 years later. Yes. That seems like a little oops, right? <laughs> she should, if she can fly, she should have been flying all over the place. Imagine, look, I don't need to get on your bat thing. I'm out. Right. And in the fight with Steppenwolf, she's always on the ground. I'm like, why isn't she up in the air with Superman, right? If, if this is 1984, I'm just saying. That would have been later, dope. Should... I see those moments right there. If she would have flew in the, the fight sequence with Superman, if she would have actually flown, and everybody would have been like surprised, or like, and she would have been just looked like, I'm like, what? And then flying and fighting Steppenwolf, that would have been dope. But it's those moments where... That's I sloppy, I think. Yeah, very sloppy. And I get it, like Patty Jenkins has the freedom to do what she wants, but I'm saying that's the kind of thing if you're gonna map out, that's a pretty big, you know, like when we see, because Zach's Justice League, I don't think she's gonna be able to fly. I don't think he's changing that. So whichever Justice League we're supposed to think is the real one that came after this movie in terms of history, that's a pretty big power to just sort of leave on the shelf with the world at stake. Yeah, <laughs> just saying, like you know. Yeah, yeah. I, plus, if she can make, I'm just pointing this out. If, I actually like what they did with the invisible plane because that is one of the campiest, silliest elements of Wonder Woman comics, right? The yeah. invisible plane. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> the Justice League movie. Why isn't she making the Batmobile and like the cyborg, the machine? Why isn't she rubbing them to make them invisible? <laughs> I'm just saying, like you know, I'm just pointing this out. She. You know, I feel like we should we, we got to go back and like give her like a were, were you were you taking money from from Steppenwolf to like make this harder for the league? I mean, you it's you can clearly see there's certainly a disconnect. I want to make this movie a specific way. Don't really care about what you did. Yeah, that's just the way it looks like. Yeah, I and it's fine, but. You know, but now when that thing happens, are people going to be expecting her to fly? If you are, then you're going to be disappointed. So, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what happens. But I also want to sort of ask you, because I've spoken about it before. And my feeling is Wonder Woman 3 doesn't get done. Do you think Wonder Woman 3 gets done? I'm going to say yes, but I'm going to say there is a real chance that Patty Jenkins does not direct it. That's what I'll say. I think there's, you know, we, we didn't talk about the box office, which has been weak. And I think, uh, you know, it's, it shows you the difference even between when Tenet came out yeah. and when this came out. People's fear of going to theaters 
it's been very bad, right? Global box office was very poor. There was like 38 million the first weekend globally and domestic, they're hoping for 10 to 15. Those are very soft numbers, mm -hmm. even relative to tenant. I think it gets done. I would bet Gall is contractually obligated to do it. It does not sound like Patty Jenkins is contractually obligated to do it. So I think given what happened, especially with you know the, the HBO Max situation, she will be incredibly expensive. And we also know she's incredibly busy. I think there's a real chance you see someone else take, like she goes to the producer role. Maybe she helps with the story, but because yeah. she said she has a story already mapped out. So she yeah. probably might help with that, but she may not actually direct. Because um, she's already stated that she's doing Rogue Squad. Right? She's doing Rogue Squadron. That's what she wants to do. That's what she's gonna focus on right now. And that's eighteen. That's gonna be like eighteen months minimum. That kind of movie, like yeah. eighteen months. Minimum. So, if Patty Jen Jenkins does do it, it will be the two reasons she will do it is money and Gal convincing her to do it. Those are the only two reasons why she'll come back and do it. Do you think the eighties? added to this movie like did that make it more nothing what nothing not no whatsoever nope nope all i remember in the 80s is break dancing and some clothing that's it that's it. it it reminded me actually of captain marvel because captain marvel i didn't feel like the 90s added much to that movie like it was like okay she's got a nine inch nails shirt on and she's listening to nirvana and it's like I, I didn't feel like there was anything specific to the 90s that moved the story forward and similarly here other than that you you know it was it was they had some fun little smile you know smiles and chuckles about you know 80s malls and exercise clothing and stuff like that i i didn't feel like the 80s backdrop mattered to this story the way that World War One was essential yeah. to the first one. And so it made me almost wonder, like, would they have been better off picking a different period in history that would have been more significant for, mm -hmm. for this story? Let me ask you this. Was the soundtrack 80s? I, I mean, I, I, I don't remember the music. You know, they didn't actually play a lot of the hits. Like in the sense of like the one hit wonders and that sort of stuff. I mean, other than like you could hear the like the there were beats in the background that were reminiscent of the eighties, but you're right, they didn't really feature like eighty the most eighties featured song was the one in the trailer, the Blue Monday remix. Yeah. So no, I don't. I don't. A lot of missed opportunities in Wonder Woman eighty four, I think. Uh, but it was still fun to see something new. I will say, like, my bias yeah. was still like, man, it was a fun for two and a half hours to see something new and to see Gaul do her thing, which, I mean, we don't talk about, you almost take her for granted, but, like, every time she's on screen, it's like, oh, she yeah, blows it's off. Like, everyone else, she just blows away off the screen. Yeah, Anytime yeah. she's on, it's like, you know, like, so she can do no wrong, I don't think, but, and in some ways, I'm like, you know, if you just want to clear out more characters and just really make it kind of her versus someone else or her and someone, but, yeah, it just, it just, you're right. It just didn't overall, it didn't feel like a step forward. It felt like running in place just in a different yeah. time period. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, another question. If no pandemic, do you think this movie makes a billion dollars? No. So I think if this movie, if no pandemic, I think the opening weekend of this movie would clearly have been bigger than the last one, but I think the burnout would have been much faster. Uh, yeah, I agree. And I think you would have, I think the box office would have been right about even with the first one, which I think is very appropriate given the, yeah. you know, the, the quality of the film. I think so, the only argument for it to be north of a billion dollars would have been if you told me pandemic happened and we all got vaccinated on December 24th. Yeah. I think the pent up demand of like no new, then that might have been a billion. But if you're saying never happened, we just yeah. went along as if our normal schedule and this came out in the summer. Yeah. I would guess 800 million again, kind of same as last time. So Patty and, and Gal came off <laughs> with the money that they were paid if they got paid with the thinking that 
this would have made a billion dollars. They got paid their bonuses or whatever, right? So they came off because this movie to me does not make a million dollars in the movie theaters. It doesn't make a billion dollars in the movie theaters. This wasn't a great film. This wasn't a movie that I can't wait for the next one. Not even the cutscene. The cutscene to me is simply a homage to yeah. Linda Carter. That's it. People thinking, oh, the next, no, nothing next. No, no, no. She, <laughs> but listen, Linda, Linda, Linda Carter is amazing. And, and I don't think any human being will ever look more like the Wonder Woman comic character than she does. But but that was clearly just a, a, a thank you to her. She's not going to then star as that character. I think the more interesting question is, where do we go with Kristen Wiig? It, was that last scene meant to say that like in Wonder Woman 3, she's going to be back? I this was an inter- so this was an interesting situation where neither villain died, right? You have Maxwell Lord, who in theory is now a good guy. And you have Kristen Wiig, who we don't know. Like, is Cheetah good or bad? This was That was an interesting... But Maxwell Lord goes, goes to, to jail forever, I guess. One would assume he would still be arrested. I know he was talking to his son like he was going to get a fresh start. I'm like, Did I don't think that's totally up to you. What? Do we see him get arrested? No. He was just hugging his son, saying, I'm going to live up in you. I, you're going to be proud of the man I'm going to be. I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> that might be like 50 to 100 years from now. So, <laughs> so that was good, I don't, but Yeah, I don't know what happened there. And I don't know. For me, it looked like Kristen Wick's character renounced her wish. Which wish? I don't know. I would assume it would be the Wonder Woman, and she'll still have the apex um, predator wish that she that she that yeah. she wanted, but it didn't look like that to me. So we uh, we don't know with that. But usually in these movies, you get to your point: arrest, jail, they die. There was really no closure for either of those characters, which was an interesting choice. It made me wonder, like, okay, since Patty already has the story mapped out, does she intend to reuse one or both of them? Yeah, and if she doesn't use Kristen Wiig, it's like, I mean, if there were, let's say, for example, if Zach was really going for this whole um, just, uh, um, you know, the uh, what's it called? The League the League of Doom, the Legion of Doom. If they were, let's say they were doing that, then her character, who's usually a part of this, is not going to be a part of it. Yep. But I don't think this goes nowhere, man. I don't think Wonder Woman goes anywhere from this. I, I'm calling. I'm saying it. Wonder Woman eighty four. Wonder Woman three does not happen. And if it does, it's going to be under some other circumstances, and not in, and perhaps not involve, involving pa- Patty Jenkins. For the record, Pablo has ended the Aquaman and Wonder Woman franchises before <laughs> this. Before the Aquaman two, That's... Wonder Woman three. He's got a parlay on that neither of them get <laughs> get to the next round. New gods did not get done. <laughs> There's a list. There's a list. Um, so I think you said it um, earlier. I, w- I was going to give it my stars out of five. Um, two and a half stars out of five is is, is what Wonder Woman 84 um, does for me. For, f- the first one was way better. Um, this one didn't do anything special for me to go crazy and be like, I want another Wonder Woman three you know so that's what i got for it man and people and people i haven't heard a lot of people going crazy saying that this was great i think there's a lot of people saying nice things just to say them they don't want to go they don't want to say nothing bad they don't want to say nothing bad i'm not saying that the movie was bad i'm i just i'm just saying that this movie didn't live up to the hype that some people had it on you know part of the part of the thing too is we compare this to the dc universe which has not been as reliable for for quality as the mcu so if you compare it to the dc universe probably still in the upper echelon to be quite honest yes yeah, if you compare it to all of the comic book genre which includes the mcu and all that sort of stuff it's kind of like middle of the road and that's yeah. kind of where we are um, but it was fun, you know, fun to have something new back. I think it will be, it's not a fair comparison to compare this to WandaVision, but because we're all streaming things these days, you know, to get that in two weeks will be kind of interesting to be like, oh, right, this is, we're back at the, the way Marvel does things versus, versus.
versus this. So. Let's see what the conversation is like after WandaVision. Will you even think of Wonder Woman 84? That would be interesting to me. Well, like I said, I if 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 Zach's if Zach's Justice League is coming in March, that's gonna be the time where like we watch that and we're like, WTF, why isn't Wonder Woman <laughs> fly? Why is she doing all this cool stuff? Like, we need it, we'll, that's when we we'll start talking about Wonder, Wonder Woman. Again. Yeah. That's when we'll talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. So any last words on Wonder Woman 84 for you? No, like I said, I, I didn't want, you know, I think I think we framed the things we, we didn't love about it, but like I said, it was still, you know, I'm still in the camp of it's it's great that we finally got to see it. I'm glad that, you know, I'm glad they're not holding it for another six to nine months because I do think in a super crowded marketplace, this is one that would have had some real competition next year. Yeah. And so, you know, and like I said, if, you, if people at home, I will say, if you don't have HBO Max, the movie looks, I mean, it looks great. The colors look great. Yes. That's sort of fun. But yeah, this, you know, I think it's it's okay and it's not amazing that's yeah that's not bad but that's where we are i think yeah yeah let us know what you think in the comment section below um if you're still watching hit that like hit that subscription button hit that notification bell get that algorithm going it costs you nothing is worth so much to us um my last words man listen i was excited to see it i saw it i'm ready to move on you know, we got WandaVision coming and I'm looking forward to seeing that and uh, getting back into the MCU with their stuff because with that sort of storytelling that we're about to get leads to so much more. Whereas with Wonder Woman 84, it sort of ends here. There's just much more speculation on what happens here. And from what I can tell, it doesn't look like much will happen, but we'll see. Thank you once again for joining us on the Nerd Gen Report, on the special Nerd Gen Report. Uh, and I want our review on Wonder Woman 84. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe and we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.